if if you're brand new to machine embroidery and you're either attending the webinar this morning or you're watching the recording later on, if you're brand new to machine embroidery, um, you've probably had a sudden revelation right after you started putting embroidery designs on your computer, and that was the realization that, hey, I can't see what those designs look like that I've got on my computer. Of course, if you've been in the hobby for even a short while or you know many many years you already know this because that's one of the first things that happens when you start downloading designs or getting designs on your computer you'll you'll look at the file and uh, you know let me pop up a file here for embroidery designs uh, ATW designs brush dragonflies there we go perfect example uh, normally what you see if you're, uh, let me zoom in so y'all can see this a little closer. Normally what you see is what you're looking at right here next to the one that says ART. And that is just a funny file name that you have no clue what it is. Um, however, there are software programs that allow you, instead of seeing just the funny little name, to actually see a little thumbnail view or, or, or it changes the icon of your embroidery designs in when you're viewing in the files it changes them over to um, actually look like what the design looks like so for example this is uh, some dragonfly designs that I'm looking at right here um, alright so that's kind of what we're uh, looking at first of all now there are other ways of, of sorting your embroidery designs but um, we're gonna we're gonna go uh, and, and talk about this way because this is kind of the fundamental way in, in my way of thinking of sorting your designs. All right, right now I'm going to exit out of there and uh, I'm going to switch over to uh, Windows. All right, so here we are in Windows XP. Windows Vista and Windows 7 are both very similar uh, to XP, but I chose XP because it was kind of the least common denominator. That is, most people have XP or some newer version of Windows and the software I'm going to show you in a minute that I use for sorting designs works in XP it works better in Vista it works even better in Windows 7 and when I say better I mean it has additional features on it if you're in Windows 7 uh, the nice thing that it does in Windows 7 that it won't do in XP is that you can there's a little slider bar that you can run and that will cause the size of your thumbnail view of your images to get larger and larger or smaller and smaller that's not available in XP so I I wanted to do this in XP rather than in Vista or Windows 7 so that the folks watching this video later on would not be wondering well why is it I don't have that little slider bar so um, that's that's the uh, conversation on that. All right, so let me let me flip back over. We're in XP. I'm going to get into this in just a second. Uh, I want to show you on our website. Uh, you've already been here at this point, but I'm going to show you anyway a little more detail. Let's uh, again. I'm going to zoom in on my screen for you. All right, up at the top here, I'm going to type in. Uh, I've got artistictreadworks.com. Organize. O r g a n i z e organize and if you go artisticthreadworks.com forward slash organize it'll take you to the web page on our site where I've stored a handout let me uh, zoom back out a little bit this is the download for this webinar uh, download the outline for webinars uh, download outline here you just click there and it will allow you to download this PDF document and when you download the document, it's the notes. And, and if, you're, if you're watching this as a video later on, you might want to head on over to the website, do the download, take this PDF, the PDF file, and print it out. And then you can follow along. If you're here with me live today, that's fine. You, you probably have already printed this out anyway at this point because you knew about it ahead of time. Um, but anyways, this document is the notes and the outline. Now, it's 11 pages long, but... The actual notes from what I'm talking about is only two pages. The rest of it you'll see in just a second. So these are the notes from the, um, what I'm going to be talking about. And here's where it kind of expands out a bit. And then down at the end here, just so you can see, I'm going to scroll down 
quite a ways down. I've given you a list. There it is, starting on page 8. Page 8, 9, 10, 11, there's four pages of the design categories that we use on Artistic Threadworks for our embroidery designs. You can copy those if you'd like to make your own set of folders using those. That's cool. If you want to add some categories in or, or delete some categories, you certainly can. All right, so that's the handout. I'll come back over to this page. Um, I had several people ask afterwards what was the software I did on, I was showing and using on Monday night. So it's on this page also. Um, what I use is a program from Generations. It's called Automatic Icon Creator. And um, Automatic Icon Creator sells, normally it's $99.95. They've got an introductory price on it, $74.95. Um, it runs on XP, Vista, Windows 7 32-bit, and Windows 7 64-bit. So regardless of what kind of Windows operating system you're using, it's going to run on there. The other thing is, if you're interested in buying it, please uh, use my website to buy it. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. But there's the price right there. You can click on it. They also offer a backup copy of this, of this program on CD. When I buy stuff, software, I usually like to get a backup CD so that I can you know, reload it on my next computer if I want to very easily. And they're okay with people having it on. If you've got two computers, fine, put it on two computers. It does not require a dongle. One of the other questions I got from folks was, do you have to own Generations in order to use this program? No, you don't. It's a standalone program. However, if you do own Generations, it adds a couple of features to Generations for you. So if you're using it, and if you have Generations and you're using this program, um, one of the things you do is if you if you go to import a design, it will actually uh, you'll actually see the design uh, that you're importing rather than just the name of the file. Uh, and also we have one other thing down here. So if you're interested in buying the software, please come over to the organize page. Uh, there's two different places you can buy it. And then finally, I got another one down here. It's my my dollar deal. I like to do this with things where I just, if you add a dollar on, you get a month of membership on Artistic Threadworks. So that's for a dollar more than what the uh, software with the CD costs. Um, the $10, obviously, for the CD that's uh, paying for the shipping, and that's, uh, you know, probably half of that $10 is the cost of the shipping. All right, so with that, the last thing on this page is a video. So this video, um, once I'm finished editing today's video, it's going to go up here so you all can. Uh, watch replays if you'd like to. And with that, let me kick back over here. Okay, so I've covered this. You can get to this web page at artisticsedworks.com forward slash organize. Uh, when you do, you can download the outline. Again, there is the outline. It's a PDF file and you could print it out. And now we're back over to Windows. All right, so covered kind of all the, the background things we wanted to talk about. Um, when we talk about organizing embroidery designs, um, a couple of comments I wanted to have uh, uh, out there for you to think about was, first of all, why would you organize your embroidery designs? Now, I know some people organize their sock drawers, so they're just organization freaks. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get into organizing things just for the fun of it. The problem, and Holly is looking at me real funny. She knows who's I'm, who I'm talking about when I say that. Um, but the problem with not organizing your embroidery designs is that pretty quickly you've accumulated, you know, hundreds or thousands, or I know some people who have collected tens of thousands of embroidery designs. The problem then becomes, how do you find the design that you want? You know, because everybody that's selling embroidery designs, they're going to give them different names. You know, some people, when we started out, I still remember the first um, the first embroidery design I think Holly ever created was a duck, and she named it uh, Duck, or or something like that. <clears throat> um, you know, next thing she did was make a, a dog design, a cat design, something else. Eventually, uh, within within a you know few designs down the road, she came back and and created another one, and it was also a duck. And so then she named this one. Oh, how do I? I don't want to call it Duck because it'll you know. So she called it Frantic Duck. And then the next thing, thing you know, we had a frantic duck with a hat, you know, and so on. So after a while, people that create embroidery designs realize that it just becomes impossible to simply 
give every design a name that's going to allow you to under, understand or figure out what it is right off the bat. So if, if you don't have your designs organized, then you're not going to be able to find the design that you want. And, and that's kind of the key issue here is that if, if you can't find the design, then it's the same as not having it, isn't it? Yeah, so you know you might have downloaded or, or and paid money for designs, and and you can't find them. So you're actually if you if you organize your designs so that you can find things, you're going to save money by not buying more designs than what you need. Uh, I know there's probably no such thing as more designs than you need, but you're not going to be going out looking and buying more designs simply because you can't find the one that you remember that you bought a while ago, but have no idea where it is. Another thing you can do is save some time. If your designs are organized, you know right where to go to get a design. You can save some stress on yourself and add more fun into the, the whole um, you know, embroidery hobby. Because, uh, I mean, who needs stress? Like, where's that design? I've spent two hours looking for it. I've got this project that I'm supposed to have it stitched down an hour ago. Um, so that's another reason for organizing them. And last but not least, and this might have actually... This, this probably have, should have been the very first reason on the list, and that is that it is easier to make backups of all your designs if they're all in, this, in the right place and organized. So I, I know some people that have embroidery designs that they've saved on floppy disks, if you remember those things. And, you know, back when we started in the hobby, it was floppy disks. And they had those little three-and-a-half-inch floppy disks boxes full of them and they'd have them labeled you know cats on this one and the label on that one said you know dogs and how do you back those up well now we have hard drives that are bigger but you can have the same effect if everything's scattered all around the place so those are all the reasons for organizing your embroidery designs now as far as a way to go about organizing them there's really a couple of different ways of doing it um, the, the, you're going to need some kind of software. I mean, you, you've got to see what the design is in order to be able to organize it. So you need some software. And really, there's two types of software that you can use for organizing designs. Uh, one type is something like um, Designer's Gallery. Let me see if I have that. Yeah, I do have Designer's Gallery over here. Um, and, and, and it does a great job. And it's a wonderful program. Holly loves Designer's Gallery. She uses it all the time for all the features that are built into it that allows her to color sort and, um, you know, she can remove stitches from a design and do all these other things with it. It's, it's a great program. We love it. If you go to the local Baby Lock dealer, it's about a, what, a $350 program. So um, it's not the cheapest way to organize your designs. And, and I kind of look at the world... A little differently than some other people in in that I look at things sort of the I, I, well I remember back when I was a kid you know I got into the Boy Scouts and uh, one of my aunts for Christmas sent me um, one of those Swiss Army knives and I thought that thing was pretty cool I mean it was the size of a brick and you know it had a spoon and a pair of scissors and a and a leather punch for for putting holes in belts and had a little saw on it, it had a couple of knife blades and um, a bunch of other things. Uh, I also had a pen knife that I'd carried around with me since I was, now this goes back, you know, 50 years to when kids were allowed to carry knives, <laughs> but I had a little pocket knife and it was just a little, you know, two inch long knife for doing whatever things boys need to do. Uh, I'd carried that around with me for years and I, and I got this Swiss Army knife. I started carrying it around in my pocket and then after a while I realized it was humongous in my pocket. So I I put it in my backpack for when I go camping. And after a while, I realized that, you know, I, I never really needed the spoon and the fork that were on the Swiss Army knife. I never, never needed the, the leather awl when I was out camping. And I didn't need the little saw thing. What I really needed was a pocket knife. And so when I look at software, sometimes I go the same route. You know, when I, sometimes simple is better. And that's the way I look at it for organizing designs. While there are a lot of programs out there that, that are, you know, great at doing a whole bunch of things, what I wanted was something that would simply allow me to see my embroidery designs while I was browsing my hard drive. And that's what I like about um, the uh, automatic icon creator. All it does, is a simple little program, you start it up, actually it's right over here, let me uh, double click the, that program. 
There it is. This is this is the preferences for the automatic icon creator. This is the preferences and it allows you to choose right over here in this panel what it is going to turn into icons for you. And then over here you can uh, select quilt files uh, formats that you'd like to have turned into icons also. And then you can select what graphic files you'd like to have turned into viewable icons like CDR, Corel Draw, and so on, all those things. And they're all turned into icons that you can see. Well, I'm just going to select all of them. There we go. And uh, that's it. Basically, you hit OK. Now, it's going to tell you you might have to reboot. That's fine. Uh, I don't have to reboot. I know it works anyway. All right, so all that did was it turned the preferences on in my automatic icon creator that now allows me to see embroidery designs as thumbnails or icons that represent exactly what the design looks like. So as I was saying, what I, what I like about this is it's a simple little program. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here to my computer and I'm going to open that up. All right, there is my computer. Now, this is a program that everybody has built into Windows and it's, and it's actually it's called Windows Explorer. Not to be confused with Internet Explorer. Windows Explorer is the thing that allows you to browse around on your hard drive and see you know, what things look like there. Let me see if I can blow up what I'm... Yes, I can. All righty. I'm still in Windows, but that little feature allows me to blow things up so you can see a little bit better. All right, so you, if you open your... It's typically called My Computer on your computer. You have a little thing called My Computer. Also, if you can find it, if you come down to your Start menu, all right, you're going to see something in here called My Computer. Um, you can also get into using My Documents. All right, so they all pretty much going to take you to the same place. It's going to open a window, and here it is. This is my C drive on my computer here. All right, and this tells me uh, that I have a C drive, which is my hard disk built into my computer. Uh, this would tell me there's a floppy disk here and there's a um, CD-ROM drive here. So, and then if you have network drives plugged in, you know, external drives or network drives, they show up also. But everyone has a C drive on their computer, and uh, you can simply double-click on that, and it'll open up and show you what's on your C drive. So, it's the contents of my C drive. Now, f for me, organizing designs. Um, the way I want to do it is I like to have my designs actually in a folder that I can get to. Um, let me explain that also. I'm going to go back a, a, a few years. When we first started into this hobby, and I, I kind of got to where I realized, okay, I need to be able to sort designs and store them, I bought a program that did a really nifty job of sorting my designs for me. It wasn't this program, it was something else that is now gone. It's not on the market, but I won't mention their name just because I don't like to do that. Anyway, bought the program and it was really cool. It, it allowed me to just organize, I could see my designs and organize them. However, what it was doing was it actually had a proprietary storage system for the designs. So when I created a folder, it wasn't really a folder. It was a virtual folder. It was a, like it was, it, it was a pretend folder, and um, you know I would move my design in there and copy it into there, and this program would then you know have kind of organize them for me. Then what happened? I was I was good with that until that computer you know died, and that always happens to us, doesn't it? Um, computer died I needed to replace it. it was time to get a you know a new computer anyway so I bought a new computer and it had a new operating system on it and the software that I had did not work on this new operating system and I was just like oh this is no big deal I, I just I'll just go get the updated version of this program and that's when I found out that the company that made the program stopped making it and I was thinking still well that's still not a problem I'll just uh, uh, oops, and that's when I found out that it, this virtual system, it actually, I couldn't actually get to my embroidery designs without going through this software. So I eventually managed to recover all of them and get them back out of there so I could back them up. And since then, I just like to store stuff 
you know, for real where it is on my computer and know exactly where it's at. So, all right, I've, I've opened up my drive and I'm going to resize this window because I'm going to actually have two windows side by side here. So I'm going to take and open up another copy of this. There we go. And now... There we go. And now we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a structure of folders. What do you mean a structure of folders? Well, pretty much... Um, well, let's, let's flip over here and show you right here. There's two logical ways that you could organize embroidery designs. Way number one is to sort them out and say, okay, I'm going to sort all my designs out based on who the digitizer is that created it or what website did I get it from. So, for example, I could create a folder for artistic threadworks. And then in that folder on my hard drive, I could put all the designs I get from artistic threadworks. Create another folder, for example, my beautiful cross-stitch designs that come from Becky J designs and put all the designs I get from Becky J into that folder. Create another one for embroidery library, another one for, you know, ABC, XYZ website. So I could do it website by website or digitizer by digitizer, make one folder for each. That's one way. The second way of organizing the designs is to do it by the category of what the design is. For example, uh, I could have a folder for all the alphabets. And regardless of which digitizer or website I got it from, put my alphabet designs into the alphabet folder. Uh, put my America designs into the America folder. Animals into the animal folder. Angels, applique, beach, you know, baby, and so on. So that way I'd be sorting by category rather than by digitizer. All right. Now there's a second level down from that that you could then take it to and say, and this is actually how I do this. Um, I could have within Artistic Threadworks because you know if you're if you're a member of Artistic Threadworks, you realize there's about today there's about 21,000 designs on there. If you downloaded all of them and they're all in one folder, you'd still have a mess and not be able to find stuff because you know there's just too many to browse through. So the second way to do it is to take your first level, if you will, of folders and make subfolders under them. So under Artistic Threadworks, I could have a kid's view and aerobics designs and alphabets and animals and America and angels and applique and, and so on. And then remember, if I had this next folder was Becky J Designs, I could have one for the same things, you know. And the next one is Embroidery Library and have ones for the same things. So I could do it that way or the other way around. I could have my folders based on category and within each category, have the source of the file. Okay, so the designs, uh, the kids' designs came from ATW would go in this folder. Kids' designs that came from Becky J would go into that folder. Kids' designs from Embroidery Library would go into this folder, and so on. I think, and this is the way my brain works, but I think it makes more sense to organize your embroidery designs by having the second way here, where it's the first level is what the designs are. So that if I'm looking for designs, and I know, for example, that I'm, I'm looking for some alphabet designs, I would first go to my hard drive and open up my alphabets folder. Within the alphabets folder, I would look and say, oh, look, I've got three subfolders here from these three different websites. Now, I remember downloading a set of designs, and I think it came from Becky J, because I believe it's a cross-stitch set. So I'm going to go alphabets and I'm going to open up the Becky J and there's the only thing in that folder is the alphabets that I got from Becky J. Might be three, four, five sets of alphabets, but it would not be hard for me to spot the ones that I needed and grab them. And that's why this type of organization works pretty well for me because you're really sorting things out at a you know at a at a pretty much of a high level. Um, I, I have probably a hundred and some uh, categories here listed out that are on the handout sheet that I gave you. But 100 or so, and then split that. So let's say that 
maybe under applique. Maybe I've got 200 designs of applique, but they come from 20 different websites. That means each each my applique folder might have a total of 20 different subfolders. That's not a lot to look through compared to what I'd have to do if I went the other way. Now, one more thing that comes up, and that is, uh, and this is something we did early on, we started looking at designs and saying, well, how do we categorize this? Because this design is a um, red work angel. Does that go into a folder called red work? Or does it go into a folder called angels? Okay, and I've got an applique of, of a uh, duck. Does that go into the duck folder? Or does it go into the applique folder? Well, after a while, we realized that, for me, it made more sense to simply say that if, if I had an applique angel, it's going in the angel folder. If I have a red work uh, train, it's going in the train folder, not in the red work folder. Okay, So that when I look into the folder with trains, it might have uh, trains that are you know normal designs. It might have trains that are cross-stitch designs. It might have trains that are uh, applique. It might have trains that are red work but they're all trains. And what the style of the design is didn't really seem to be a sorting point for me as much as what the design is a representation of. So that's kind of one of the issues you have to resolve in your own mind. And the way I do it, like I said, is whatever the style of the design is not as relevant as what the design represents. The other thing that happens is once in a while you'll get a design or a set of designs that could fall into two or even three categories. For example, you might have uh, designs that are children at the beach. Well, does that go in the folder for kids or for beach? Right? Uh, you might have um, <laughs> of, you know, a set of designs that are flowers uh, in the shape of crosses. Does that go in the you know um, spiritual category, or does it go into the floral category? At that point, you kind of want to make a decision and say, how would I look for this normally? Would I look for it as a cross, or would I look for it as a floral design? And it's up to you. It's up to you. You know, if you remember, hey, I had some floral crosses. You know, personally, I'd probably go look in the crosses folder first, and if it wasn't there, hop on over to my floral designs folder. But those are the sort of things that you have to decide. Once you've decided it, then the rest of it becomes pretty simple. Okay, so let's get into the simple. All right, here we are. And I have uh, on one side over here all my designs that are all mishmashed all around. I'm actually going to work my way over to where I've got my design stored at the moment. And... Um, do, 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 do. Documents. Thank you very much. Now my designs are on actually an external drive. Okay, in case you're wondering. Okay, and here's my ATW designs. Now th that's the bulk of the designs that I have on my computer. I do have some designs from other people, but most of them are actually um, our own designs. All right, so now I've got these designs over here. Now let's focus for a moment. I've, I've got these. This is going to be where I'm getting the, my, my big pile of designs that are not sorted out. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit closer. All righty. So now this is my C drive on my computer. As you can see up here, I'm, I'm on the C drive, the root. Okay, you would open up your computer to wherever you want to open it up to, uh, but I'm going to open it up into my C drive. Now that I'm here, I'm going to go into Documents and Settings, All Users, Shared Documents. Okay. Now, the shortcut for here, y'all, let me, let me give you the shortcut for this. I'm going to come down here and open this up. My Documents. Okay. Same thing. My Documents. All right. However, my documents takes me to a bizarre place that I don't even want to go into with you. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you where, where it goes to. My documents goes into uh, my Mac. So uh, that's why I'm saying you would get into my documents. And then all you do is right click over here and come down to new. And we're going to create a folder. 
That's it. Now we're going to name the folder. What do I want to call this? Well, I'm going to call this folder, how about my embroidery designs? Enter. Okay. Next. Next thing I want to do is I want to send this folder to my desktop so I can get to it easily anytime I want to. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to say send to and it pops up over here and it says desktop and then it says in parentheses create shortcut. So I click that. Now if I look on the desktop of my computer right down here is the thing that says shortcut to my embroidery designs. It's right down there. So that's what it did. It put a shortcut. The folder's still here in my documents but I put a shortcut down here so I can get to it easily anytime I want to. I'm just, just going to go ahead and close that and show you what happens. Here it is on my desktop. I double click and now I'm right there inside of my documents. And there we're in my embroidery designs folder. So here I've got this folder created and now what I want to do is I'm going to right click and create another folder. Now this is where I'm going to use that list that I had printed out. So I'm, I right clicked and came down to new and said folder. Okay, now I had a list that I, if you print out my handout, you can go through that and start looking at what are the different uh, folders that you'd probably want to create. That you can add to it if you want to, obviously. But if we flip through the PDF, I'm flipping back there, I'll be right with you. Back to page 8 where my list starts, there it goes. Okay, I know that I want a folder called a kid's view because i got a bunch of designs by that name, so I go a kid's view view. That's it. Right click, make a new folder. This one's going to be called aerobic. Well, you can see the process here and um, just so you know, there's a kind of a quicker way to do this. So I'm going to show you that next. I'm going to make a new folder. We're just going to call it new folder for the moment. I'm going to take that new folder. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say copy. I'm going to click on the white space here. I'm going to go paste. Oh, by the way, the shortcut for paste. Okay, I can do paste, right click, paste. But the shortcut for paste is to hold down the control key on your keyboard and hit the letter V. And it will just paste, 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 paste. As you can see, it's just numbering those folders for me and creating. I've already created 31 new folders. Okay, now if I click and then click again, it allows me to edit the folder name. And now all I have to do is start alphabets, animals, America, and so on. Click on that one. Click, wait, click. And so on. So we're just going to go through here and we're going to create all these different folders that we want to put designs into. Now, in case you're wondering why my cursor is so large, a uh, couple of people asked if I would make a larger cursor. This is, <laughs> I know this is an abnormally large cursor, but that way they can follow along. Uh, one lady was sight impaired and uh, said that would help her. So there we go. Uh, let's see here. Bath time. All right. Click, click, bath time. Okay, now, in case you're wondering, some of you might do this a different way, and that's fine. You can click on it and right-click, and when you right-click, you can choose Rename from the little menu that pops up. That's fine if you want to do it that way instead of click, click. So the next one after bath time is beach. All right. Now, I, I mentioned both these ways because some folks don't realize that there's a different way to do it. You know, they've always done it. Somebody showed them to do it this way and right click and choose rename. Other folks know that you can click, click, and that brings up the edit for the name and you can do it that way. Either way that works for you. Okay. So now that I've got that done, let's say that I'm going to open up the alphabets folder. And let's say that inside the alphabets folder, I'm going to make a couple of new folders. I'm going to 
call one of them artistic threadworks. Okay, and I'm going to make another new folder. I'm going to call it Becky J. Well, if I clicked on it properly, I would be able to. There we go. And so on. And so on. And again, we can do the same trick where we take one folder, copy, paste, 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 and then rename them. And so on. So now we're, we're making our folder structure. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to come on over here to where we've, and we're, this is the part where you're going to need to kind of dig around through whatever you've got your stuff stored at right now. And it's time for you to actually drag it over or copy it. All right, I'm going to zoom out because this is going to involve two folders. Hopefully this is big enough on your screen that you can see what's going on. I've got a set of designs over here that is not sorted out. It's just called Beach Stick Beach Boys. So it's boys at the beach. Okay, I'm going to put that one over here. I'm going to go up a level. And I've got a set of folders here, and one of them is called Beach and I'm going to put that in the Artistic Dreadworks folder under Beach. So folder. And I like to abbreviate Artistic Dreadworks ATW. It saves me a lot of time. I'm going to take that folder and I'm going to grab this set right here of designs and simply drag it right on top. And you see how it's got a little plus symbol? I'm going to drop it right on top of that folder. And that's what it did. It just dropped it in. So I have taken it from my one spot and put it into my organized folders. And there it is. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a little closer. So there we have the Stick Beach Boys folder is now there. Now if I open this up, you can see that I'm actually, I have icons showing me because I have this software. If I didn't know what the design was, and it's very likely that there are designs on my computer that I don't know what they are because they're not in a folder telling me, I can just hover over it and see what it is. Now that little thumbnail might be hard for you to see what it is. So I right-clicked on it, and what the automatic icon creator does is it generates a little bit larger size. So now I can see, oh, it's a little boy with the surfboards in the sand, okay? It also tells me that this is uh, an art, ART file that I'm looking at right now, Artista for Bernina Machine. It is 47 millimeters by 92 millimeters. I happen to know that that translates into a little less than 4 inches by a little less than 2 inches. And there are six thread changes and six colors on it. Okay? So that's what the software does is if you can't identify what the design is or if you want to browse around through them and see what they look like. Now, if I was browsing to see what the designs look like, instead of being in the view that I'm in right now, I'm going to come up to this little view icon here and click on it. And right now it's on details, but I can change that from details to icons. That changes the size of this a little bit. Now, if you're using Windows Vista or 7, you have a little slider over here on the side that allows you to change the size of those icons and get them larger. But even if you're using XP, you can do something else, and that is choose thumbnails. There we go. Now, in the thumbnail size, I can actually browse through all my designs. I've got these little boys on the beach, and this is what I was looking for. I was looking for a little boy diving into the water, actually. So that was what I wanted to do with this. All right, and that's what the thumbnail view allows you to do. Let me zoom back out again. And I'm going to come over here to, let's see, diaper pin alphabet. There we go. So there's an alphabet. So let's go back on this one. We're going to go up a level. All right, here's my alphabets folder. And this is artistic threadwork set of designs. And I'm going to go over here and grab the alphabets there's an embossed alphabet. I'm taking that and dragging it over here. I had a, uh, I had a diaper pin alphabet. I wanted to get that one. There it is. Based on the name. Okay. There, there, there. Uh, I think I have a birdhouse alphabet. Actually, I got several different alphabets with birdhouses. I'm going to take all of them. Let me show you a trick. In, in, because, it, well, this may be something you already know. There are probably people out there that they're going to go, oh, I never knew you could do that. 
Okay. Uh, what I'm going to show you is that if you're viewing in my computer, which is to say Windows Explorer, if you're viewing, viewing some folders and you'd like to grab more than one of them, you have two options. If you click on one folder, click on the next one, click on the next one, it just gets all these folders individually. But what you could do, let's say I wanted number one and one B1 down at the bottom. I could choose number one and then come down and hold down the control key on my keyboard and click the last one. Whoops. Held down the wrong key. Let's try it again. Control. There we go. And now I've got two of them selected. And let's say I also wanted this one here. Okay, I've got all those. And now I'm going to drag these three on over into my alphabets folder. Okay, so it did it. All right, let me show you the second thing. Remember I said there was two things you could do? The second one is that you can click on the first item in a list, and if you want the entire list, let's say I wanted all of these, instead of holding down the control, I can hold down the shift key and then click again on the last one. Okay, it selected all of them for me, and now I can take all of them and drag them over to here. Now it's going to tell me, hey, you know what, um, you already have that folder, it all exists, what do you want to do, replace them and say yes to all? And it's copying all of them over to my new location. All right, one last thing I want to touch on here, and that is uh, a little detail that you need to know about hard drives and moving folders versus copying folders. The way it works is this. If you have uh, a folder on your hard drive and you're going to and you're going to move that folder to a different location on your hard drive, all you need to do is pick up the folder and drag it to the new location and drop it there. Okay? When you do that, it moves the folder. That is, when I say move, it means if it was in location, let's say it was in this, in your heart, and your C drive, and it was in a folder called Embroidery Designs, and you drag that folder from there over to another place on your C drive into a different folder, for example, called uh, Seashells, and you drop it in there, it will move it. That is to say, it will no longer be in that first location, it will be in the second location, so it has physically moved the thing. However, if you have two different hard drives, so for example, you have the C drive built into your computer, and you've plugged in an external hard drive through the USB port. So you have a little USB hard drive, or even a thumb drive plugged in there. If you drag a folder from there, from, and this is what I'm doing here. I've got it on, this is on an external drive, if you will. And this is my C drive over here. If I drag it from here over to here and drop it, it's still over here on the first location. So that you understand the, the, the rules set up by Windows are this. If it's within the same hard drive, it's a move when you drag it. If it's from one hard drive to a different hard drive, it's a copy. So it still exists over here and now over here also. So when you go to do backups of your embroidery designs, if they're all in your folders, and let's, let's go up a level here. Okay, so I've got all these folders and they're all in my one called My Embroidery Designs. Okay, so here I'm looking in my documents, I've got My Embroidery Designs. If I wanted to make a backup, if all my designs are in this one place, all I have to do is plug in an external hard drive like I have over here, open up my documents, and drag this over to here, and drop it, and it will make a copy of everything that was on the other drive. As you can see it right there, it's doing a copy right now. And there's my backup. So once I've set everything in the same folder over here, you know, everything's all organized, when I want to do a backup, all I need to do is plug in a large thumb drive. If I have, you know, lots and lots of designs, I want to plug in a large thumb drive. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, simply drag this over and drop it onto the other one. All right, that's how we do it. Now, obviously, there's there's a lot of work to do here. Let me come back into my embroidery designs because so far, I've only created a kids' view, aerobic, alphabet, America, angels, and so on. I've created about 32 different folders. I haven't named them all yet, so I've got some work to do. It's going to take me a little time. That said, it's a whole lot better to get everything organized so I can find things rather than leave it a big old mess like what I've got over here on my other one. This is just, oh, it's terrible. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be busy for a little while. You probably will be too. But I hope that answers the question, how to do your uh, organizing of your embroidered designs.